Hello and welcome to my Azana guide. So is Azana a good unit and should you use her? These are the eternal questions that keep you up at night and we will answer them in this video. All right, so here's Azana here looking at this fire, contemplating her life decisions. Um, so let's, let's check out the roster. So let's pull up her basic abilities. All right, here we go. Okay, she is a spirit master. She can hit things with a stick, which is not how you should be using her, but it is a thing she can do. It deals low damage. Uh, how you want to be using her is to use Right of Lightning and Right of Wind. So both of these abilities are pretty decent. Uh, I think Right of Lightning is a little bit better. Paralyzing things and dealing spike damage is good. Right of Wind is okay, though. Um, it should hit... Uh, a few different enemies, you know, can hit multiple dudes, so that's decent. AoE is good, but generally it's probably better just to spike things, but you can use AoE if you need it. So, first spell, single target, big damage. Um, it can paralyze uh, at level 50. Alright, so here, here's how, like, paralyze chance works and, like, status effects work. If you are a higher level, it increases the chance. If you are at a lower level, it decreases the chance. Bosses generally have a decreased chance to have status effects. Some bosses are straight up immune to them. So against enemies that are the same level, she has a 60% chance to paralyze with Rite of Lightning. So that is a little bit better odds than 50-50, obviously. In other words, a coin flip. So 60% is decent. So on average, most... Like, not most, but like more... The paralyze will pop off more than, you know... It'll, it'll, it'll occur a little bit more often than, you know, 50-50, so it's, it's pretty good. It, it usually will happen. Sometimes it doesn't, so it has a 40% chance to not happen. So the odds are in your favor that it does occur. So that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here, is that it has a pretty good chance of occurring. So, you know, generally, you know, 60% of them will paralyze, so. So it usually hits, is my point. Usually. Sometimes it doesn't, so there you go. Alright, so Red of Wind hits a few different foes, uh, changes the direction they face, so it allows for easy backstabs. This can be useful if there's a bunch of foes in a group to just hit them with some AoE damage. Um, turning them around is combo food to line up easy backstabs for melee units. So she has pretty good shutdown slash utility, like flipping things around is kind of like shutdown in a way. Because it, it, it increases damage against foes, so it's like an offensive thing. And then shut down from her paralysis. Also, this can spread on water. Uh, so if there's like water that's connected, it can chain reaction and hit other foes and also paralyze them and damage them as well. If foes are in a body of water, they'll it'll, it can, you know, can chain reaction to other foes in that water. So something to keep in mind. Next we have a Cursed Strike. So whenever... She deals damage to a foe. It decreases their luck for three turns. Um, this is a weird ability. It essentially re reduces enemies' crit rate against, like, for attacks that aren't back attacks, because ba back attacks are always crits. So it's kind of weird. It's not super useful, but you just get it for free, so it's fine. It just happens no matter how you deal damage. So it's it's okay. It's nothing that's gonna change anything in a huge way, but it's fine. Uh, next we have Rite of Rain. This, these two skills basically make Frederica bad to run with Izana because she gets damage increase in clear weather and her creating weather reduces Frederica's damage. So they're, they're kind of like cats. They don't like each other. They cat fight. They do not appreciate each other's vibe. And also the rain puts out the fires that Frederica can create that are very useful with oil traps. So... Very, very polarizing units in this way where you can't run both of them. I mean, you can, but then they're kind of like indirectly undoing each other in some way. So create a rainstorm for five turns. It basically just makes random puddles and puts out fires. Mostly you use it for the damage boost, which I'll go into in a minute. Uh, but it's, it's decent. Next is Tempest. So I do like that it says this. Summon a Tempest and decrease the bow accuracy of all enemies and allies for five turns. So Tempest reduces bow accuracy, which, you know, if there's a bunch of enemy archers, this can be good. So you can intentionally not run archers and then just spam this, just maintain this, you know, throughout the game. Just to reduce their accuracy. It doesn't reduce their accuracy by a ton, but it does, it does it enough that it could help a little bit. 
it's it'll help mitigate some damage maybe like every like fourth or fifth shot misses roughly speaking but it's not like huge it's not like 50 percent miss rate or something i think it's like 10 to 20 percent um i don't know the numbers off the top of my head but if you do definitely post those in the comments but it, it doesn't reduce it by a lot is the point uh, next we have pierce defenses passive decrease an enemy's magic defense for three turns when you deal damage to them so this makes follow-up magical attacks more damaging so also keep in mind if you use something like right of wind to hit a bunch of enemies that are lined up you can pierce all their defenses with follow-up aoe magic so it just makes them a little bit more vulnerable um, so it's pretty good then we have right of luck i don't know what it is what it is <laughs> with this luck thing but she can lower enemy luck and raise ally luck which i don't think it's big value i would rather have a damage increase a speed increase a movement increase um a damage decrease on damage taken something i'd rather have that than luck because luck in my eyes is like one of the least useful skills like attributes because it just increases crit rate and i don't think magic can crit i mean i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure it can't um okay so we have that then we have right of thunderstorms so this ability in general has like a 30 percent chance to hit units enemy units it can hit everyone on the map and have a chance to paralyze them so if there's like 10 units it'll hit like you know 30 percent of them so it'll hit like roughly three there is a way to make it so it hits every single enemy unit and it and it involves the time child and i'll show it uh but without the time child it's just kind of okay it's whatever um not the best skill but it's fine. It's not like something you should be prioritizing unless you're specifically running Time Child. Okay. All right, let's go over her stats too really quick. Okay, so pretty good magic attack. This is with a magic amulet, which is just plus two. So 59 magic at level 50. That's pretty good. Uh, strength is terrible, but she should not be whacking things. That's a meme. You don't do that. Uh, physical defense is actually pretty decent for a mage. Uh, 32. Some mages are like 20-something, so she's at least she at least broke 30. Magic defense on the lower end for mages. Evasion, very bad. She's going to get hit. Movement, very low. Luck, very low. Maybe that's why she's obsessed with luck, because she has none. Um, accuracy is irrelevant, because magic always hits. Speed, decent. It's like medium. 28 is good. So yeah, so those are her stats. Uh, for accessories, I'd say just throw magic accessories on her. I put... Oh, I guess... Okay, her speed's actually lower. Uh, so it's only 25. So oh, that's why I'd put that on her. So her speed was low, so I gave her a speed bracelet and uh, a magic amulet. You know, obviously, you'd want to run like a, mag a magic bracelet if you have one. I have it on another unit. But yeah, those are, those are her stats. The four move is kind of painful, but she's not going to be moving much anyways. She's just basically going to be nuking things with these two things. And that's pretty much it. And then sometimes using this if you want to run the time child who's broken. But we'll go into that in a future video. Okay, let's look at her upgrades. Very important aspect of the game, the upgrades. Okay, there she is. Okay. So, five weapon damage, or actually, weapon potency. Um, someone said these increase magic damage. I don't know that this one particularly does, because she does physical damage with this. Um, I don't know that for certain. It doesn't hurt to get, and it's cheap to get, so you might as well get it, even if it does. Uh, if, if it does, definitely, so can someone drop a comment if it does or not? I'm not 100% certain on this, because I haven't, like, tested before and after. I would assume so, because it's kind of stupid to whack things with the staff. But if it only increases staff damage, these aren't as big value. The magic definitely does increase magic damage, so these are must-haves. If this does not increase the, the, the spell damage, it doesn't. these don't matter at all. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they do, so that you should get them. All right, increase health by 10, great. Uh, increase lightning damage during a rainstorm. This is why you want to use rainstorm. Increase wind damage during a tempest. So both of these are good if you plan on using either of these spells, which you will be because there are only her only two spells really. Um, so okay, and then we have increased physical defense one and two. These are useful on mages because if they get hit, which they often do. They take a lot of damage and can die very fast. So any any health or defense is always good. And then she has reduce the TP cost of Rite of Rain and Rite of Tempest by one. 
making them both both cost one. So this helps her be more efficient with her TP. These are good. You want to use these. You're going to be casting both of these or one of them. So, yeah, you want those. And then for these abilities, I would say the magic damage is better than this unless you're running Time Child. If you're running Time Child, this ability is like straight up broken. Uh, and I'll show that right now. So, but I'd say magic's a little bit better. Uh, you definitely want the magic, you want the damage, and the tanking. She has very simple upgrades, like you pretty much just want all of them. And they're not very expensive to get, because she only has two tier three. And tier three are the most expensive and difficult to get. So you can, you might as well just get all of her upgrades, if you plan on using her. Uh, okay, so is she a good unit? I'll just kind of skip to that part. I would say she is. She has high spike damage, she has decent shutdown, and that's about it, really. She's just she just goes does good damage and can just keep stunning things, which is or paralyzing things, which is very useful. It shuts an enemy down for two turns. Um, hugely useful for defending your team. So you can't go wrong running her. The only problem is that she's bad with Frederica. She's really good with Corintin because he's an ice mage and doesn't care about things being wet. So she's fine with him. Um, all right, so let's grab the time child and a battery. Let's get a battery going on. Let's get a battery that's free though. I don't like waste. I hate wasting money on her. Like just, just because it's like, I have to keep doing the stupid farm thing to get more materials. So I'm not a fan of. Uh, there he is, wasting money. All right, here we go. Okay, let's just start. So we'll do the time child gimmick. Okay. Okay, <laughs> I just keep saying all right. All right, so so before we do the gimmick, where what what does Azana want to be doing, and where does she excel? So like with all like with all mages, she never wants to be near the front lines. She always wants to be behind other units that are tankier or on high ground. She wants to cast things and be within range of at most one enemy, unless she has like invincibility on her for one hit. Then she can be in range of two enemies. But if two things can hit her, and they can kill her, they will do that. So you have to keep that in mind when running her. So, all right, first thing we're gonna do, we'll just do this, just get him to five. Doesn't matter. I could have just moment of truth him and it would have been, he would have regenerated one, but it's fine. All right, so next we'll do, we'll just pass on her. We'll just get the TP. I'll show you the big gimmick, cause it'll kill all of them. <laughs> so it's very hilarious and insane. Um, we have to pass another turn. Yeah, so let's pass another turn. Actually, I might as well go over her other abilities and then uh, give her more TP. Okay, so let's go over Rite of Lightning. So you can see here, this is the range of it. It's a range of four. One to four. So it does good damage. Now, obviously, it's going to one-shot these because they're low level. This is just for an example. Generally, it deals around 30% of something's health. That's, so that's like the average damage it will deal is like roughly 30% of something's health with a 60% chance of to like to paralyze. It's only 75 because they're under leveled compared to me. Same leveled units will have a 60% chance of being paralyzed for two turns. So huge value. If they're in water, it'll chain reaction. So let's actually do this. Let's create some rain and it'll make puddles. So when it makes puddles, it'll make a random puddle pattern, which is a funny thing to say, a <laughs> puddle pattern. And once it does that, new puddles shouldn't emerge, as far as I can tell from just using her in general. Sh like, it'll just be like this initial pattern, and then it'll be random if you cast it again. And I think it adds on to it. So let's let's test that, because that that's something that I'm not 100% certain on. Because generally, once it's up, you only recast it. When it's down, and when you're like moving all these other units around, it's hard to keep track of that. So like in my playtesting, um, I didn't specifically take note of if new puddles form, so let's test that right now to confirm that. Because that's important to know, because that's the difference between using an ability or not. She doesn't need this, but we'll just do it anyways. Okay. <laughs> just smacking her. For ones. Alright, I'm just gonna have him whack something. Oh, he can't even- he's so weak he can't even kill a level 8 enemy with a whack. <laughs> he is truly a child. Alright. All right, let's get this rain going. Let's rain again. Let's see if it creates new puddles. It doesn't seem to have. Yeah, I don't think it did. Okay. So it didn't create new puddles. Okay. So that's good to know. 
Now, I don't know that if it stops raining, it will create new puddles, but that's like... I, I want to say it won't, based on just recasting it. That could be wrong, though, so I guess... Let's just start killing some of these, just to speed this up. Alright, time child. Whatever. Do your thing, buddy. Alright, I, I am curious about that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start killing some of these. So, because it'll... In due course, you. That should kill these two. As long as there's like two enemies alive, it's that's all we need, or one enemy. Okay, rate of rain. Okay, because this is active, so now she has a damage increase from it raining. Um, and then also, if you cast lightning, you can see here, if I cast it on here, it will hit these two. And one thing to note is if you cast it directly on something, it will deal more damage. So it'll deal its full damage. If you cast it on the water, it'll deal like secondary damage. It's not as strong. So it's best to cast it directly on something that's standing in puddles. Otherwise, it, if you just cast it on the puddle, like if you can hit the target and still be safe and be in a good position, you should do that. If you just cast it on this, it won't deal as much damage. You can't tell in this situation because either amount of damage will, will be lethal to them. But if these were level 50 enemies, you could tell that it does less as the secondary and more as the primary. Like it, like the AoE effect deals less damage, but here is here is an example of the AoE. I just hit a different part of the thing. It spreads to all of them. Actually, you can tell it didn't kill this one. Uh, the damage seems to scale away from the, uh, the effect too, so the further out it seems to be like less damaging. So, that's another thing. Um, it still does good damage, so the basic thing to take away from this is Puddles the puddles and water sources that link enemies together will scale your damage. So that's just the thing you want to take away from this. So if you can get enemies lined up on a puddle and you can cast directly on one of them, you'll deal pretty good damage and have a chance to multi-paralyze as well as get AoE damage. And that's AoE paralyze is insane. Alright, let's do let's do that on him. Okay, delay damage. Oh my god, it only- oh yeah, it's, I think it does like 20% of their health or something, or 20, like maybe 25. So it's like scaled damage, but it is really good on bosses, his his ability, Time Child's ability. Alright, so let's do- let's create a Tempest. Right of Tempests. Alright, so we now have a Tempest. Very cool. We'll just wait. So I showed you the lightning, I showed you the creation of puddles from the rain, and the lightning's interaction with puddles. So now I'm going to show the wind attack, which will now be damage scaled because she is in a tempest. And we'll kill some more of these enemies just to get rid of some of them. Alright, here we go. Alright, so here is the damage pattern for Rite of Wind. So it is an AoE, can it multiple foes, and it will turn them around. These will die, so they shouldn't really get turned around, they just die. So that's fine. Uh, but she deals increased damage during a Tempest, also reduces enemy archer accuracy. Both are pretty good if you're not running archers. And turning things around is fine if you have melee to follow up. Like if the enemies are interlocked and you can't get behind them for whatever reason, which is a thing that happens a lot. Or if a unit's too far away to like re like to walk around the enemy and hit its back, she can flip them around and you can have your melee just run in and just start getting big crits off. So, pretty good uh, utility. Um, and not utility isn't the term I often use, but like, it's it's like a function of increasing your units. I guess I guess that is utility. It increases your allies' damage, so that does fit in the definition I use. Uh, he's just gonna kill us just to reduce some of these enemy turns. We're gonna wait for the rain to stop. Which should be pretty soon. Um, in two turns. So, Alright, so those are these two abilities. Right of Luck just increases everyone's luck on your team. Doesn't seem to do too much. <laughs> it's just whatever. It's not really worth using at all, but it, it's there. I don't know why it exists. Like, I guess in an abstract way it improves damage by increasing crit rate slightly so it maybe on average increases causes like a maybe one crit out of 10 or 20 attacks to occur it's really hard to say how valuable it even is 
I, I feel like it should be a little bit better. It just doesn't do anything, really. It's just, like, a weird ability. They're just like, well, we don't want to give her something good that can hit every ally, so just make it increase luck type of thing. All right, so the rain should end next turn, and then we'll cast rain again to see if it creates a new pattern. All right, rain has ended. So I'm going to position some of these units... Like where the rain was, so, so I can... I mean, I have a mental idea. I can see, like, where it is right now. Alright, so we'll park her here. More rain, let's see. Nope, no new pattern. Okay, so casting new rain when the rain has ended does not create a new pattern. Casting rain again during rain does not create a new pattern. So we've tested that. So we know for a fact that the random rain pattern... Once it's laid out for the first time, that's the random rain pattern for the map for the rest of the, the match. So that's good to know. Tempest doesn't have any tile interaction, it just affects arrows. So, yeah. So you do, so Tempest doesn't like change anything insofar as what's going to happen with like tiles on the map. It just affects arrows and it doesn't leave any kind of effect like puddles. So, okay. Okay, so we went over that, went over this. All right, so finally, we have this. So you can see here, oh, these are th these are going to be 100% accurate accuracy because they're so low leveled. Uh, but in, against normal enemies, it'll be like 30% accuracy. So I'll show you the combo if you want to run this. She's good without this combo, but it's here's the thing. All right, so here's what you do. Very simple. Stop time. Great. All right, time has stopped. All right, he can act again. Turn back time. She is no longer stopped. Cool. And then you can do this. And this will prevent them from dodging and will give you 100% accuracy. Now, she already had 100% because they're low-leveled, but against same-leveled enemies, they it'll be 30, and then this will put it at 100. So here's this ability. It hits everything on the map. She does have to charge it, too. But because everything is stopped for two turns, it doesn't matter. So there you go. So there's her kit. Um, I'll go over some quick things. So you can create puddles in a specific pattern by doing this. You can have an ice, you can do one of two things. You can have an ice mage use like frost breath or some AOE that, that freezes the ground. And then you can melt it with a fire mage or you can have someone throw an AOE ice stone. So, you know, like this item that Lionel sells. So you can do this with mages or with items. You can either create ice and then melt it with fire through magic or with items. So like ranged ice stone, ranged fire stone. You throw a ranged ice stone, another unit throws a ranged fire stone, and it creates a plus pattern that lightning can now strike at an exact location that you decide. So if you have a wall of units, like you have your frontline tanks on a choke point, for example, you can create a puddle exactly where you want it to be. And this can be huge value because then every time she she nukes something and has a high chance of paralyzing, it does AOE damage with a secondary chance of minor paralyzing. Uh, it's still paralyzed for two turns, but it's usually like a 30% instead of a 60 on the second hand paralyze. Uh, and also depending on if an enemy is a boss or not, if it's immune to paralyze, these are all factors. Bosses have a lower percent chance of being paralyzed, for example. Some bosses are just straight up immune to par paralysis. So, so yeah, I think that's most of everything. Um, I went over the mages, creating puddles, the rain pattern. Uh, for the damage thing, for the upgrades, it doesn't make sense that it would increase magic damage because it's a physical weapon, but I'm pretty sure it does. I haven't tested this, but if anyone knows for sure and has tested, definitely drop a comment and I'll pin it. Um, but yeah, thanks for checking this out. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like this type of content. I'll be making more. And definitely drop a comment. Let me know what you think about Izana. Um, overall, I would say she is a really strong unit. Uh, she can't be run with Frederica. Or if you do, it's gonna they're going to like work against each other because the rain puts out the fires Frederica makes. The rain or the tempest prevents the weather from being clear, so it gets rid of her damage buff. She's definitely better with, like, uh, Karentin and Narv, who's just, like, a generalist mage. But, yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking this out. See ya.